I love this gray blanket of snow that mm. meets the sky, right? Yeah. It's so quiet out here. It's just, it, it's so, it's like we're in a snow globe or something. Yeah. Our own yeah. little dark snow globe. This was such a great idea to go. Let's just to get, get out of the our, grid. Oh, right? To get out of that corporate. Yes. To work at a law firm where we are yes. running cover for some of the worst offenders mm. on the planet. Uranium yeah. mines and, and that fucking Venezuelan mm -hmm. battery production plant that poisoned that whole village. And we have to sit there in front of that courtroom and defend these people. Everybody gets a defense though, right? That's what you said. I know. I just feel like when I come up here, I feel like I'm betraying every value yeah. that my grandfather stood for. Well, you are betraying your wife by sleeping with me, so <laughs> yeah, there's, well. <laughs> there's that. Where does she think you are right now? I told her I was going to an antique watch show in Atlantic City. Oh. Well, you know what I do is I have my assistant go with my phone. Mm-hmm. To and Atlantic. So you to Atlantic you City. That's that so way, if this, smart. yes, you know, my assistant looks a lot like me. Yeah. They wear a little bit of prosthetic. They go in, they walk around. So there's shots of there's the camera. footage of you, of someone mm -hmm. that looks a lot like you. I am so excited to go ice fishing today mm. and to take you out to do something that my Grampy and I, we used, used to, to do, do all the yeah. time. And then we'd mm -hmm. give the fish to the town. We would, you know, because of course, communists. You can't eat all that fish yourself no. anyway and i don't understand communism very well but it's i know not. that it's about giving shit away for free i think yeah. <laughs> i think that's what it's something. about yeah something about everybody pitches in and everybody gets a fair share you know it's funny is that they don't like jesus yeah you know, i mean not that i'm religious but you're not not religious you know no 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 not not religious because i'm running around <laughs> okay okay you worship at the altar of this <laughs> okay. all right okay all right god damn put your legs down <laughs> jesus what i mean what did we come up here for okay that's ice true fishing. ice fishing <laughs> let's go get freezing and then we'll come back here and then we'll warm and up and then we'll warm it up and then we hear the soft crush of feet in snow it is really cold out here you hear that ice popping yeah it's crack crack cracking god i love you so much i, I tell you i hate darling she would I make feel. me an honest woman Sleep, i know <gasps> Ooh. Bald eagle, our nation's animal. Amazing. That's... We don't have to do this patriotic shit for each other, though, right? No, That's no, only no. when I run for office and you're my first lady and I am the president of the United States because that's where oh, this is going. Big... That's where this is going? Oh, yeah. I'm... Are you kidding me? You think that we're just going to stop at a law firm? Oh, so I, did I tell you? You're partner. You were made partner. That's why I'm... I'm signing, I'm filing Kyle. for divorce from Darlene. Yes! Bernice! <laughs> you brought me out on the ice to tell me that I've been made partner? Yes! Yes! Oh Come my on. god. <laughs> oh, I'm filled with love and life and laughter! <laughs> I'm gonna jump up and down out here. Yeah, I'm gonna do just it. jump up and down. <laughs> here we go! <laughs> oh god! Whee! No, no, no! Stop that! Bernice, Whee! stop! Bernice, stop! Bernice, you've gone under the ice! You're under the ice! Oh my god, Bernice is under the ice! What you gonna do when your world comes tumbling down? What you gonna do when you're looking there's no one around? Are you gonna run? Where you gonna hide? Yeah, yeah, what you gonna do? From Wondery, I'm Tony Atamanik, and this is Don't Panic, the show that explores all the most ridiculous, unrealistic, worst-case scenario situations that couldn't possibly happen to you in real life, because boom goes the dynamite. What if they did actually happen to you in real life? We've taken a fall through the ice. But not to worry, magnificent listeners of Don't Panic. By the end of the show, me and my guest, the wildly talented Lennon Parham, will find the best way to escape from under the ice. Speaking of Lennon, you know her from Minx, Bless This Mess, 
and beep. But mere seconds ago, we were desperately trying to escape the frozen hell that is being stuck underneath a sheet of ice. Okay, so Lennon, we fell through a thick-ass layer of ice. How do you get out of this horrifying scenario? Really, all I know <clears throat> about this, I learned from uh, from watching Alone. Mm -hmm. If I fully went under, I would need to find the hole I came through and go mm -hmm. back up that way, right? Mm -hmm. Reach yep. back out. If I was with a person, have them pull me out, and then I would have to like combat the hypothermia. Mm -hmm. that I was feeling. Let's say you fall in and there's no one there. You wandered out. Do I have a, I would ha have, have a broom with me or some kind of stick <laughs> well, you, that, you uh, that I would sweep the ice <laughs> in case I fell through that I could catch the broom. No, no, you're just in your winter coat <laughs> and you're in your snow pants and you decide to take a walk and you didn't realize you're out on the ice and you crack, you went right through. I mean, pretty quickly over. You think so? Yeah, you really don't. You, it doesn't take very long for you to die that way. Because when your body starts to freeze, it goes into panic mode and it starts yeah. to preserve the the things that it can preserve. And the you don't brain. have brain function anymore. Oh, wow. You so know it doesn't what I mean? even preserve the so brain. You can't just... think... Well, I mean, your brain goes, shuts down yeah, because yeah, your yeah, vital yeah, yeah. organs are all. Jesus Christ. So I think if you don't get out of that water really quick, it's bad news Let's bears. just say you're not floating under the ice. So you've fallen through, yeah. but you've able to at least grab the edge. Do you think there's a way to get up? I think so, yeah. You might have to lose your shoes. I bet they're heavy and weighted with water. Right. But if you can get your knee up over one edge of the ice, you could probably pull yourself out. On a scale of one to 10, how terrifying is dropping under the ice and uh, going through the hole, under the hole? You really wouldn't have time to be terrified. You know what I mean? Like when I oh, watch, when I watch a scene of, of that, like if I've watched a scene of it. <laughs> yes, yes. That is very terrifying to yes. see how are they going to get back out or whatever. <sighs> yeah. But like if I fell under, I would try to get out and then you'd have to just like give it to God and be like, I had a good one, you know? I just imagine in my mind the vision of like hearing water sloshing around and just seeing dirty under ice and like, and being and realizing that there's no- There's no way out. There's no way out. And I love in movies when they show someone going under and they're like swimming under, <laughs> like looking under the, the hole. In the freezing like, water. Uh, you're like, come on, man. You know, I almost got hypothermia one time filming. Really? It was a reshoot for a half hour comedy and they changed the story wow. and they decided that they wanted us to be skinny dipping on Christmas day. Filming in L.A. or in... Filming in L.A. in November. Okay. In the Pacific Ocean. Oh, so that's like cold water. We have wetsuits on. Sure. Waist down. And then we have like nude coverage over our boobs. And we we get sort of like taken out into the ocean. Multiple cameras on like floaties. And then we have like safety guys with us. Mm -hmm. The water was so freezing, but the like... The wetsuit starts to warm you up, you know, because the water gets between the wetsuit and your body and then your body warms the water up. And so that keeps you kind of warm. But mm -hmm. then when you have to take the wetsuit part off of your upper body in order to make it look like you're naked, mm -hmm. you start to get a chill from the top half of you. Yeah. We were out there filming, me and another woman, and the battery needed to be reloaded in the camera. Forget they it. were like, we're going to leave you out here. Just stay here. We're going to go reload the camera. Why wouldn't they bring a fucking battery on the boat? There's no boat. Oh, 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 yeah. Sorry, yeah. There's You're no right. boat. There's like scuba divers with a surfboard. Oh, okay. We just I literally walked into the water and sw and they swam us out. I don't know why I inferred there was a boat. I guess I just was logical. There should be a boat. There should be why a Why can't they just boat. shoot the boat out? Why can't they just shoot around the boat? These are great questions. Anyway. I'm getting angry for the you. The water safety guy was like, I've never seen a worse run safety set with water. <laughs> the guy with the surfboard that was like, you know, this amazing swimmer and stuff. He was, he was outraged on my behalf. I was like, I don't know how... This is supposed to work. I've never done anything. It was a straight to offer. It was my first straight to offer role. And so I was so happy to be there and so pleased. By the time they got me into shore, 
I think I was, ha- I had beginning hypothermia and uh, they had gotten a hot tub, like a portable hot tub. That's like the worst thing you can do, isn't it? But I went and I sat in that hot, which felt like burning water. Oh yeah, of course. It took me days to recover. That's absolutely terrible. Great. At some point, my brain was like slowing down. Of course. And I was like, this is terrifying. Yeah. Because yeah. if you were by yourself and you were just making decisions on your behalf or leaving it up to somebody else to make a decision. Yeah. And they don't have your best interest at heart, potentially, you know? Apparently, there's a point in hypothermia where it gets so bad, Mm -hmm. you lose your mind. At extreme hypothermia, people get giddy, silly, horny. They find people in, like, weird sexual, like, acts yeah. Who have like been in hypothermia. Now, maybe that's also to stay warm. I just realized that could be also that. Yeah. But it does seem like extreme hypothermia makes you completely nuts and you do crazy shit. Well, that's right not before different you die. than like near death yeah. when you are about to die. What's your like first memory of something that terrified you? It's usually from a dream. It's usually from a nightmare. Mm. But I'm talking as early as you can go. I had recurring dreams about everyone that I, like waking up in the middle of the night and believing that everyone in my family had been turned into something or it was under mind control and that I was the only one that knew what was really happening, kind of like invasion of the body snatchers or like I see my neighbors like zombie walking, but they look like potentially still my neighbors. They're just like, why is it 2 a.m. and they're walking around? Or someone breaking in. Like I used to remember used to position my body in the bed in a way that would make it look like my body was in a different place from the sheets in case somebody came and (laughs) tried to grab me or stab me or something they would stab and it would be like ha ha my leg isn't even there (laughs) it looks like my leg is there but it's not because i'm so you know um i had two haunting dreams my mom and i were staying at a hotel and i realized that in the middle of the night they were turning people wow and then they would get sucked into the bottom of this pool. And I had Oof. to convince her to get out of there, basically. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah, there yeah. was another one. And I think this had to do, I saw the howling as an adult. And I and I must have seen it when I was pretty little. Because I had this dream that I woke up in the middle of the night, like randomly. And I went downstairs and my family, it was not my real family, but my, my dream family. Yeah. They were like, there's a... We've gotten a message and there was a VCR and this Mm -hmm. is before I remember having a VCR, really knowing what a VCR was. And so we, it said like press play. And so we press play on this VHS tape and it was this terrifying looking guy who had a bullet hole in his forehead. He was sort of like a skeleton-y kind of man with like green curly hair. And he was based, he just was like, I'm, I'm coming for you. And there was then a knock at the door. I went and opened it and there was like rustling in the corn outside and like the cornfields. And so I shot into the cornfields with a rifle three times. <laughs> and then we just waited and waited and waited and nothing happened. And then all of a sudden the guy from the video swung down upside down over the awning of our front door oh. with two more bullet holes in his forehead. Oh, so you got bleeding, him. but alive. Like oh. you can't get me. I'm, it's impossible. Yeah. I am your shadow self. I'm with you forever. <laughs> and you better accept me. And and the first bullet hole is right over the pineal gland of the third eye. So I'm really letting you know. Yeah. I am within you. I am I'm part of you. Interesting. It's a great dream, actually. What's funny is I'm not that I'm gonna get all Jungian, but it is great because they're really like young dreams that are in sort of like the instruction manual for your unconscious. Yeah. Sort of presenting this idea of two things, which is transformation. Yeah. Right. And the unrelenting relationship with, you know, what people call the shadow self or whatever you want to call it, just a part of you that is, you know, we all have, which yeah. is the terrifying or terrified part. Yeah. That's such a great part of the relationship between yourself and and your waking self. And also it's a, a great way to run through threat assessments. Yeah. And fears and process in- what's, what's currently in your life that is terrifying or yeah. threatening you, like you said, or if things are changing or shifting. I've always had crazy dreams, like very violent. Yes. A lot of times I'm the one fighting, you know, and yeah. having to kill or cut people down the middle with a steak knife or, I mean, it's 
dark. I re- there was a dream where my grandfather was, I remember watching him tossed downstairs, you know, just like thrown into a dirty bathroom. Oh, yeah. I'm always protecting people in my dreams, though. I'm always, there's always somebody else who I'm trying to keep safe. I used to be, I had to rescue my mom. Someone attacked my mom. Yeah. And then I would unload in a fury, a flurry of violence yeah. on this perpetrator yeah. that felt just completely justified. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. There's a catharsis. And then the other one, and I think this was processing partly because they are no longer, they don't happen anymore. I think because I finally reached the stage, you know, I went through forgiving and understanding the six-year-old me and the 12-year-old me. And I finally got to the 20-year-old me, the 21-year-old me. Yeah. Yeah. I really did some stuff to myself, you know, I did some awful things to myself, put myself in really bad situations. Yeah. And I forgave that self and I stopped having this particular dream, Mm. which was that I committed a murder, but I don't know who I killed Mm -hmm. and I know I'm going to get caught for killing that person Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the, and the coming to terms with the fact that I'm going to have to turn myself in for this murder. Yeah. That dream stopped as soon as I forgave my 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 20 year old self it's like karma it's like facing up to the choices that you've made and well i was the victim of my own murder yeah (laughs) Yeah. i think was what happened there i was the victim of my own murder i was killing myself yeah Would you wake up ever horrified at your own violence no i never i would wake up oftentimes feeling bad but not because Uh, I was like horrified at my own behavior, but because I was glad it wasn't the reality of my life because it felt so real during it. Yes. So I'd wake up like, and sometimes I'll talk or there's been times when I've called out for my husband to wake me up out of this dream because I realize I'm asleep or I realize this isn't reality, but I have to escape it. And in order to do that, he has to wake me. So so, in your sleep, you'll say his name and he'll wake you? Or I'll just call out in some crazy, "Ah, ah," like crazy noise. And then he'll wake me up knowing that I'm in distress. Okay. Well, you're a panicky kid in real life. There were certain things that we were scared of in the eighties. You know what I mean? They were just like, yes, you were kidnapping. Yeah. People taking you, taking you to a cabin or something like, you know, just stranger (laughs) danger, getting picked up in a van, all of that stuff. Yes. And doing drugs like nuclear war. Sure. AIDS. I was scared of getting taken and being a latchkey yeah. kid. I had all of these like scenarios, like I wasn't going to answer the door. If I did answer the door, what would I do or what would I say or how would I pretend or yeah. trying on some of that stuff? I was a latchkey kid too. What was your primary panic? Like, or not primary, what's your marquee panic? Like, I was going to be late for my best friend's baby shower. <laughs> She lived in Connecticut. This Everybody makes fun of me for this. So my best friend was the first of us to have a baby. She lived in Torrington, Connecticut, and I was coming from Brooklyn. And I was like on the phone with my dad. And, you know, I'm a planner and I would have planned all this out. And I have to catch a certain train to get up there. Yeah. But I was on the phone with my dad, just chatting it up. And my husband came in and he was like, weren't you supposed to leave at 930 for that? And it was like, I was like, yeah, but it's 915. He was like, it's 1015. Oh. And I was like, oh. like, I lost my mind. I flung myself back onto my bed. I had like a child tantrum where I was like slamming my hands, <laughs> kicking on the, on the bed. Like, how can you do that? Like, it was so, I lost my, I was so mad at myself for miscalculating or not knowing what time it was or whatever. And um, mm-hmm. I ended up making it not too late. I did something else. I like rented a car or something, but that's not has to do with like being in danger or whatever. It doesn't matter. No, no, no. It's not about the criteria is not about danger. That's the, that's the criteria. <laughs> but what's your panic now? I mean, I have kids, so I would, it's probably something to do with them and their or getting a call that something happened to my parents or, you know, I yeah. guess I do have a thing where it's, if somebody doesn't call me when they say they're going to call me, I'm like, they're dead. I mean, <laughs> I don't yes. I didn't mean yes. to e- immediately go yeah. to that, but. If my mom doesn't pick up the cell phone and I call the house phone and she doesn't pick up instantly, I'm like, oh no, that's it. Yeah. Something <laughs> happened recently where there was like an 
like I got a, a I had to turn Citizen off. Do you do the Citizen app? Yes, it's like, of course. Yeah. T- yeah. So it was like a five car, car pileup on the freeway right out like the exit that my parents house is at right now. Mm-hmm. And I, I was like, oh God, it was, it was them. And so then I called both of them. It went straight to voicemail. I like, <sighs> I, after yeah. that, we turned location services on. Cause I was like, I got to know where they are at all times. But, uh, that's what I do too. Yeah. Whenever my mom leaves the house, I track her walk. If she stops for too long, I call. Yeah. I go, what's going on? Well, I'm walking. Yep. And I'm always relieved by the, what do you want? What that? Because I know one day that just won't be the case. That's yeah. just life. Yeah. Okay. So we know how Lennon Parham thinks she'd survive being stuck under a sheet of ice. But what do the experts say to do? You got to brace yourself. You want to immediately call for help. Once in the cold water, your body's cold shock response called the torso reflex will make you want to gasp for air and hyperventilate mm. because your heart rate accelerates rapidly. Yeah. But you, of course, must avoid doing so because you're underwater. Although the initial cold shock passes, you're still in grave danger of quickly developing hypothermia. Just a four degree drop in body temperature can trigger hypothermia. Remove any heavy objects uh, or clothing that's weighing you down, such as fanny pack, uh, backpack or skis. And your shoes. So look at that. Uh So you were right about Uh that. And you were right about this hypothermia. Uh, Focus uh, your energy on getting out immediately. Once you've calmed down, your head is above the water. Your remaining in the water can shorten your survival time by 50%. Yeah. If underwater, look for contrasting colors. When the ice is covered with the snow, the hole will appear darker. Ice without snow will make the hole look lighter. Neuromuscular cooling or swim failure is bigger and more immediate concern than hypothermia. So you'll just start like getting the hippie hippie shakes. Ah, here we go. Get horizontal and kick your legs. <laughs> so once you've lifted your upper body onto the edge of the ice, wait a few seconds. Let your so you can you do want to swing your leg up. Yeah. So Lennon's really hitting and all, and then look at this. Tintin has rolled onto the ice. <laughs> You're welcome. Tintin. I mean, uh, Tintin's the dog, but whoever this guy was with yeah. Tintin, this is literally the animation. Yeah. Uh, and uh, by the way, I just want everyone to know Luba Lee, board certified family nurse practitioner, she's the one who who medically reviewed this. Roll out, he said. Roll out onto the onto the. Oh yeah. Ice. Roll out. Surviving once you're out, you need to retrace yeah. your steps. Uh, look for hypothermia. Um, take off your wet clothes once mm-hmm. you're inside. Yeah. And then you need to get near some heat. So you want to warm up gradually, maybe not get in a hot tub. Not fresh in a hot tub. Okay, so now the question is, can we put together everything we just learned and use it to help us survive falling through the ice? And just to recap, this is a couple that's having an affair. They are two disgusting power lawyers who defend the worst companies in the world, but they are in a cabin that that his communist grandfather built. They've gone out to ice fish instead of having intercourse. And unfortunately, Bernice has fallen through the ice. Let's head back to the sea. Oh God! Oh God! (laughs) Come on! Come on! Head above water! Get the head of the water. That oh no, this isn't the time for that. Okay, come on. I'm going to okay, kick my leg. Kick your legs. Oh my, yeah. my shoes are up. Here's my Oh, leg. get your shoes. Oh, okay, you're shaking roll me it here. all over roll the place. Here. Roll you? I'm rolling you. I'm rolling you. <gasps> Darlene, right? Darlene? Darlene is your wife's name. <laughs> How dare you that this is over? Oh, this shit. is over. Oh, no. As soon as I get as soon as I get warmed up in the cabin, I'm out of here. Bernice, Bernice, Bernice. Please, oh, please. It's too late. Bernice, I ran back while you were in the water. Fired up the hot tub so we could just drop you in we there. can't get right into the hot tub. What I, while I was underwater. I was gone well, for 10 I, seconds. Listen, no, you were gone for way longer than that. Really? You don't know how. You were gone for almost 45 minutes. It's a miracle you're alive. It's like you were preserved. But I read in this Us Weekly about a celebrity who was revived by being put in the hot (laughs) tub. Get in there. Weeks later at the divorce hearings, (sighs) we call to the stand Bernice Bactrim. 
Miss Bactrim, is it true that four weeks ago during your affair with the defendant... Yes, but that- to be clear, we never had sex. I wanted to, but he insisted on ice fishing, in which I always almost met my death, and therefore, there, we never consummated the affair. I think that's it, Your Honor. Case closed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lennon Parham, for doing... Don't panic. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, it was great to see you. <laughs> Be sure to follow us wherever you get your podcasts, and you can watch our full podcast episodes on YouTube on the Wondery channel. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss an episode, and follow me, the host, Tony Atamanik, on Instagram, the real, actual Tony. You can comment, give your thoughts on what panic scenarios we should do. Go for it. Goodbye, and remember that fear is what keeps us alive. Don't panic. Are you gonna run? Where you gonna hide? Yeah, yeah, what you gonna do?